Hey guys, it's Bob Davis with the Welcome to and Welcome to Australia News Network. Okay, first, oh, okay, welcome back everybody to Australian News Network. With no Powerball winners, jackpot grows to estimated $1.3 billion. With no winners and Saturday night's record $949.8 million, million dollar Powerball drawing, the next jackpot could reach an estimate of $1.3 billion, lottery <laughs> officials said early Sunday. The winning numbers were 16, 19, 32, 34, and 57, and a Powerball of 13. To win the jackpot, all six numbers must be correct. The first five can be in order, but the sixth must be the Powerball number. Gary Grief, the executive, di executive director of Texas Lottery, told ABC News on Sunday he was... Surprised to see the results of Saturday Night's drawing. He said 25 players won a $1 million prize and the other two won $2 million prize. If you don't play, you will not win, Grief advised. Breaking news. White House Chief of Staff appalled by El Chapo Guzman's comments and interview with Sean Penn. A top White, a top White House official said he was appalled by comments made by Jacqueline El Chapo Guzman in his interview with actor Sean Penn, and called it very good news. The notorious drug lord was captured. I was appalled by his bragging about an epidemic that's keeping this country on heroin addiction. The White House chief of staff, Dennis McDon McDonald Dino, told George Stephanopoulos, Stephanopoulos on ABC's This Week. I was appalled by his bragging to the interviewers in Rolling Stone that he moves more heroin than anyone in the world. All right, next order of business. Trump on North Korean leader Jim Kong Jong-un. You gotta give him credit, and I will admit, you gotta give this bastard some really good credit. Fucking, you gotta give fucking Kim Jong-un some really damn good credit. And I say that myself. Okay. Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump appeared to praise North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un saying at a rally Saturday, "It's incredible how he was able to dispatch his political opponents." Trump called Jong Un a ma a maniac during remarks about North Korea's nuclear program during a rally at Ottawa, Iowa, but conceded, "You got to give him credit." How many young guys, he was like 26 or 25 when his father died, took over these tough generals, and all of a sudden he goes in, takes over, and he was the boss. He's the boss, Trump said. It's incredible. He wiped out the uncle. He wiped out this one. He wiped out that one. I mean, this guy doesn't play games, and we can't play games with him. Last week, North Korea announced it has successfully detonated a hydrogen bomb after an earthquake was detected near previous test sites. Though the White House quickly disputed the claim, North Korea released an image of Jung-un Jung personally authorizing the test. 
The next morning, Trump said that North Korea was under total control of China. No, oh, Rudolph, you fucking no, that's not it. This one. 24-year-old arrested in sting of Southeast jewelry store robberies to appear in court Monday. A young woman arrested by the FBI in connection with a sting string of jewelry store robberies across the southeast is scheduled to make her initial court appearance Monday. A spokeswoman for the FBI in Jacksonville, Florida told NBC News Today. Abigail Lee, 24, was arrested with an incident Friday in Smyrna, Georgia, following tips from the public, the FBI said. The Jewelers' Secret Alliance reported to a total losses of, from six robberies as more as $4 million at retail. I think if you were seduced by the rush, it doesn't matter what your age is, former FBI agent said, and ABC News contributor Brad Garrett told NBC, ABC News. It becomes intoxicating. Another person with Kemp at the time of her arrest was, was also in custody, the FBI said. Authorities have not released the other person's identity or how the arrest took place, an FBI spokeswoman told NBC, ABC News Today. Bengals mail okay now we're in sports. Now on to sports. Bengals playoff meltdown will shake them in many ways. It'll be known around these parts as the meltdown, which a chance to finally end their playoff fertility. The Bengals let it slip let it all slip away. A fumble, a defensive lapse, and two ugly penalties set up Pittsburgh's winning field goal for eighteen to sixteen victory on Saturday night. The second most crushing playoff loss in Cincinnati history. The solidified they solidified their reputation as a team that can't keep it together in the big games. The Bengals twelve to five won AFC North and tied the club record for victories in the season. They'd won a dozen only other two times in nineteen ninety eighty one and nineteen eighty eight. When they went to Super Bowl and lost to the 49ers both times. The 1988 season ended with Joe Montana leading at a, la- a last-minute touchdown drive, aided when th- with the Bengals dropped an interception. In this one, they lost not only their cool, but their credibility. Linebacker Vontae's Burfecht and cornerbacker Adam Jones, players with a history of getting out of control, drew personal fouls that moved the Steelers in range for winning the kick. Coach Marvin Lewis watched his team unglued. I uh, watched his team come unglued under pressure again. This was a disgraceful performance by Cincinnati Bengals, said SCBS analyst Boomer A. I don't even say that word. The quarterback of Cincinnati's 1988 Super Bowl team. An ugly performance by Vontae's Perfect, who should not only be fined but suspended for a significant amount of time. This guy is a danger on the field to opposing football players. I'm a former Bengal, and I'm embarrassed by the way the game ended and by the way these guys act on the field Saturday night. I feel bad for Marvin Lewis. And I'll tell you one thing. If Marvin Lewis just can't control his players, maybe, maybe Marvin Lewis shouldn't be standing there on the sidelines coaching. Lewis fell to a 0-7 in the playoffs as a head coach. As a head coach. The most such, most such losses to start career in NFL history. His teams have dropped opening round games in five consecutive seasons, another NFL record. No team has done it more than three times. The Bengals haven't won a playoff game in 25 years, the sixth long streak in league history. Call for supplies as Oregon standoff enters second week. The occupation of natural wildlife area by a small armed group of upset, upset over federal land policy stretched its sec- into a second week as the mother of the group's leader asked supporters to send supplies. Everything from warm blankets to coffee creamer. The group that seized the National Wildlife Refuge in Oregon's high desert country on January 2nd planned no media briefings. It was quiet at the entrance to the refuge Sunday. The leader of the occupation, Amin Bird Bundy, Bundy, 
has repeated rejected calls to leave buildings and at the refuge, despite pleas from the county sheriff, many local residents, and from Oregon's governor, among others. He said that the group will leave when there is plain when there is a plane to transfer control of federal land to locals. So far, the authorities have not moved in to remove Bundy's group. Amon Bundy is the son of rancher Cliven Bundy, who was involved in a 2014 Nevada standoff with the government over grazing rights. Philadelphia police officers fight off man trying to steal his gun, cops say. A Philadelphia police officer working a detail at the hospital where a fellow officer wounded in a shooting was being treated fought off a man who tried to grab his gun, police said. The cop was working a detail Saturday night for Officer Jesse Hartnett, who was shot Thursday by a man who walked up to his car firing repeatedly. The officer was approached by a man as he entered the Penn, Pennsylvania Presbyterian Medical Center, according to a statement from the Philadelphia Police Department. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten in five days. Do you have any money to spare, the man asked, according to the the police. The cop handed him a five-dollar bill and then entered the hospital, police said. When the officer came back to enter the emergency room, the same man approached him from behind and tried to grab his gun, officer's gun from his holster, police said. As soon as the officer felt the, man in the hand, man's hand on the gun, he spun around, stopping the man from getting the gun out of his holster, according to police. He was able to subdue the man after a brief struggle with, with the help of PPMC security team members and other officers. The officer was not injured, and the suspect sustained a minor facial injury, police said. Neither suspect nor officer were identified in the police statement. According to police, the suspect said he wanted the, wanted the gun to rob a store, and there was no connection to the shooting of Hartnett, Hartnett, Hartnett. He was wounded by a man using a police handgun that had been stolen in 2013. Hartnett was allegedly shot by Edward Archer, 30, who police say pledged allegiance to ISIS. Great, another fucking ISIS crazy. And now that Archer confessed to committing the shooting in the name of Islam, Philadelphia Police Commissioner Richard Ross said during a news conference Friday. Philadelphia Police Commissioner Richard Ross said during a news conference Friday, according to him, he believed that the police defend law defend laws that are contrary to the teachings of the Quran. No, that's not the case. He was charged with attempted murder, aggravated assault, assault on a law enforcement officer, recklessly endangering another person, possession of an instrument of crime, violation of Uniform Firearms Act, and related officers. Hillary Clinton says Trump's task against Bill Clinton's past will, won't work. Hillary Clinton warned Sunday that Donald Trump's latest attack were about controversies over her husband's past are a dead end that won't work. They can say whatever they want. More power to them. I think it's a dead end. Blind ally, ally for them. But let them go. The Democratic presidential candidate said during an interview on CBS, on CBS News, Face the Nation. When asked whether it is fair game for candidates to go after Bill Clinton's infidelities. It's been a fair, been fair game going back to Republicans for some years, Clinton said. They can do it again if they want to. They can be their choice as to how to run in this campaign. Didn't work before. It won't work again, she added. I'm going to talk about the differences between, the, between us because that's what Americans care about. Let's see anything else? Probably not. I think I pretty much cleared it all. Alright, guys, if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Give this video a thumbs up. Um, comment and subscribe. Um, the news channel, the, the the information I got from all these uh, all this news will be in the links be links in the description below. Um I think that pretty much covers it. And uh Let's see, um, have a good Sunday, everybody, and this was Australia News Network.
And also, links to these songs will be in the description below, too. Thank you, Mike, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the vid. And there will be more videos coming up as time goes on. Oh yeah, shoutouts too. For subscribe to Taman Bob. He has really cool gaming videos to for you to watch and make Jugger Nuggets and Big Brother. Okay? Subscribe to those channels. And also subscribe to Train Productions by I Love SDA70. I said it right this time, I think. And Eric Alpha Productions for helping me out with this video. Anyway, peace y'all.